What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Crew 2. And well, as y'all know, it is Wednesday, which means the new summon is now live. And for this week, we have the Winter Runner. That's going to give us the Sled Rooftop and Platinum, which I would say is definitely going to be a pretty interesting reward. I'm looking forward to seeing how that's going to look on some of the vehicles in the game. But in goal, we have the Ford F-150 Raptor Evo 2. I would say most players are probably going to have this truck. So if you guys do, you will luckily get the money back for that. But moving over to the next summit... The Flying Germans is once again coming back with the lovely Cayman GT4 Wasp Edition. I would probably say this is one of my favorite streetcars to use because of its handling. Not only that, I also think we can all agree that's one heck of a nice looking Porsche as well. Like, I really do love the GT4 model. I would love if the new game actually has the GT4 RS, but um, I guess we can keep dreaming on that. But in gold, we have the legendary half set boosted for the Alpha GP class. And I would say those affixed stats on there are most likely not going to be something anybody's going to want. So you guys will obviously want to go after skilled. And then when looking at the Flying German Summit, you guys will probably notice the nice mix of events. We have a powerboat race, we have two different rally raid events, a hypercar, a street race. So I do think this summit is going to be really fun. If you guys did actually miss this vehicle, you will get to test drive this thing in the summit once again. So I'm looking forward to that one. And then moving over to the next summit, it's going to be under the radar. And for this one, you guys will notice in the Platinum Reward, it's going to be a live reward sniffer set for the Rally Cross class. And honestly, I really don't see a lot of people actually run this legit set in many of the other classes either. So I would have to test this out with the Rally Cross class. But to be honest, though, if you guys don't plan on driving all that much around in free roam, I really don't see a reason to actually use the live reward sniffer set. But then again, there's always going to be room to add to your collection with some of these sets in the game. But moving over to the last summit, Beyond Space is once again going to show its appearance in the game, guys. So in gold, we have the blue window tint. And then finally in platinum, we have the Raptor from Outer Space making its return. I'm not going to lie, though, I was kind of mixed on this truck when I first saw it. But after looking at it and driving it for a bit, I do think a lot of players are going to like this weird quirkiness of this vehicle. For one, there's obviously a big spaceship in the back of it. Not only that though, the biggest takeaway of this truck is going to be the fact that it is a dually. So if you guys do like those in real life, you actually have a chance to drive something kind of similar to it. And similar to many of the other summits in the game that normally feature a vehicle, you guys will also be able to test drive this thing as well. I would most likely say many players are not going to expect how good this thing is actually going to be. And now moving over to the Winter Runner Summit here, starting off with the Escape. So for this one, guys, I once again ran the Koenigsegg Regera. This is probably going to be my go-to vehicle for many of the off-road escapes because I do like the way this car does handle off-road, which obviously doesn't make that much sense with it being a hypercar, but there is definitely going to be a lot of different routes for this one that could easily get you probably 10,000 plus yards, but to be honest, guys, I really don't think you actually have to do that. I actually followed the road for the most part and got 151,000 points which isn't going to put you that far behind the main 156,000 so if you guys can aim for around 5,000 yards I'd say you'd be just fine on this escape but moving over to the next skill is going to be an aerobatics one and this is also going to be in the snow and the sun's also going to be shining so be prepared to basically burn your eyes out when doing this one but luckily doing the aerobatics are going to be pretty simple for the most part. I would say the Zivco Edge is going to be one of the best overall planes for this. Even though I really couldn't fly when I did this aerobatic skill, I still managed to get all of them perfect, so I would definitely recommend trying out this plane. But moving over to the last skill is going to be a slalom, and for this one I actually wanted to do something I've never used before. That's going to be a drift vehicle on an off-road slalom, which is probably something you would never hear in a sentence, but funnily enough though, you can easily run a different type of vehicle on the slaloms and still get a really good score. My friend once again used a monster truck, which is kind of hilarious because these vehicles you would probably never see on the slaloms. I was like, you know what, let me jump into something that you'd also never see on one of the off-road slaloms either, and it turns out even a drift car can also do one of the slaloms. As long as you guys are running a scorebreaker set, I would say you can basically run any vehicle class of your choice, but moving over to the first event now, we're going to have a rally raid event that's also going to be no restriction. So for this one, guys, I actually did pick the Pontiac GTO, the Judge. 
which is most likely going to be one of the oddball type of vehicles you would most likely never see doing one of these races because I would say most of the leaderboard is going to be covered in the Enforcer unit, which is by far going to be the best overall option for this race, guys. But I would recommend trying out the GTO. I really do think with this car being a four-speed, I feel like it would shock a lot of people. Not only is it going to be pretty dang fast, but it also has great handling and or stability as well to match it. And now moving over to the next Rally Raid event, you guys will get to drive the Silverado 1500 Intrepid Outdoors. I would say it's going to be a pretty long time since we have actually seen this vehicle in use, at least before in that DLC. But one thing you guys are going to notice immediately about this truck is probably going to be the camera angle on this thing. It basically looks like someone's sticking their head out of the vehicle, like that really old Sly Cooper game. And you pretty much are using a drone. At least it does look that high. Plus also you guys will notice this thing does have some stuff on the top of it. It really does feel that way when you do go around turns. But overall though, I I really can't say the Intrepid Outdoors is going to be a bad rally rate vehicle. It might even be considered one of the better ones. And now moving over to the next event's going to be a rally cross race. And for this one, I once again use the Ford Fiesta. One thing I do want to admit, guys, is this is going to be ski jump. So I would say the Fiesta is probably not going to be the greatest option. I still managed to get under 2 minutes and 20 seconds with this car. But I would definitely say the Enforcer unit and or the WRC5 are probably going to be the better cars for this one. I do think the Fiesta is pretty dang good, but it's definitely not going to compare to those other two vehicles. And then moving over to the event on the bottom is going to be a street race where you guys get to drive the Chevrolet 3100. This thing is going to be from the 50s, and my goodness, it does kind of drive like that. But then again, though, I was not expecting a truck from the 50s to actually turn around a corner going 180 miles an hour. But it turns out, guys, it can somehow do that just a little bit. So do keep in mind, though, it is going to be a four-speed as well. And we all know how I feel about the four-speeds. I probably should have put this thing in automatic, would have made me a bit quicker. But I was finding myself basically shifting down into second around the corners, and I noticed that was not the right gear and then I would go into third gear and I basically lose all the power but I guess you really can't pick the correct gear with these vehicles at times but overall for this vehicle being old I wouldn't say the 3100 is going to be bad it's more of the fact of going to be an adjustment period and then moving over to the next events also going to be a street race as well and for this one guys it is going to be no restriction I did end up running the Porsche 911 Carrera 4S, which obviously, guys, looking at the leaderboard, you're most likely only going to see the Countach for the most part because that car is going to be incredible. I did once again want to try the 911 Carrera, though, because I do feel like in some ways this car is going to be slightly underrated. Not only does it fly around corners with really good stability, but it also does like 255 miles per hour. So this thing's definitely going to be pretty dang fast, though. One thing I do want to mention though about the Carrera is if you guys are running manual, do keep in mind this thing is going to be an 8 speed, so you're most likely going to be finding yourself shifting this vehicle pretty often. And then moving over to the final event is once again going to be one of the mixed type of races and for this one you will have to drive a demolition derby car in one of the rally cross races on the game. So for this guys you will have to use the fender bulk. I personally didn't find this truck to be as bad as I thought. I mean it is kind of wonky to use on this track though. One thing I would also recommend is do not think this thing is going to be a rally cross car. Towards the beginning of this race, I was also driving the bulk like it was the Ford Fiesta, and that was probably not the greatest idea I could have came up with. I would recommend being kind of careful with the aggressiveness when you guys do drive this vehicle. But overall, I would say a lot of players are probably not going to hate the Fender Bulk. I was actually pretty surprised with the way this vehicle did. Sure, it's not going to be a rally cross car, but my goodness, for a demolition derby truck, it definitely did a lot better than I thought it was going to do. But that's basically going to do it for this summit. Let me know if you guys have any questions at all in the comments below, and let's jump right into this.